What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on with cost volume profit analysis. We're now gonna talk about the topic break even, common topic that comes up in this chapter. And to begin with, what I wanna do is reintroduce the formula that we talked about in the previous videos. We said that profit is equal to what? It's equal to the revenue or the sales minus the variable costs minus the fixed costs. And so when we talk about break even, basically what we're trying to figure out is when does the profit equal zero? So not when you have a positive profit or you've made money or you have a negative profit, you've lost money. When is your profit zero? When are you neutral? When do you break even? And break even, it's kind of a general word, right? You can look at the profit equaling zero from a bunch of different parameters. And we're gonna look at it from two parameters. We're gonna find out when do we break even in terms of the number of units that we sell or the total sales or we could call it break-even sales that we make in order for that profit to equal zero. So let's look at the first perspective. So looking at the break-even from the number of units. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this general equation and I'm gonna break it down into a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna introduce some new variables here. So I'm gonna let X equal the number of units sold. The number of units that you sell. And then I'm going to introduce another variable. Let's say, um, let's call it S. This would be the selling price per unit. And then I'm gonna introduce another variable V and that's gonna be the variable cost per unit. So let's introduce these into this general format here. So we got the profit, just write P here. What's the revenue in terms of these variables here? Well, if you think about it, it's the selling price per unit times the number of units that you sell. So it's gonna be S times X. What's the total variable cost gonna be? The variable costs are gonna be the variable cost per unit times the number of units that you sold. So that's gonna be V times x and then fixed costs it doesn't depend on the number of units sold so i'm just going to leave that as f c now when we're talking about break even if you remember i'm talking about when does the profit equal zero and so when they're talking about the number of units they're saying or they're asking how many units do you have to sell? What's this X variable gonna be in order for the profit to equal zero? So what we can do here is we could actually isolate for that variable X. So what we can do is we can bring this negative fixed cost over to the left side. So that's gonna be positive fixed costs. And then we're gonna have S times X minus V times X. And so to isolate for that X, what we can do is we could actually factor it out from these two. And we'd be left with S minus V. Over here, we still have this FC. And then to isolate for this X, we could divide both sides by this S minus V. So this bracket here would cancel out. What we do to one side, we gotta do to the other. And so what we end up with is X by itself equaling the fixed costs over the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. And so you'll see this uh, formula most likely come up either in your lectures or in your textbook. Another way that you can represent this formula is the fixed costs over, remember this is the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. And what does that equal? that equals the contribution margin, the unit contribution margin. Right, if you remember contribution margin is revenue minus variable cost, but that contribution margin, you could look at it from a total perspective. So the total revenue minus the total variable cost 
You can also look at it from a per unit perspective. And notice that this S and V, that is from a per unit perspective. And so that's actually a point I want to make here. Remember that this fixed cost up here, this is from a total perspective. Remember, this is the total fixed cost. And then this here, this denominator is from a per unit perspective, right? The selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So either one of these formulas will work. So let's do an example to show how all of this works. So a company sells a product for $40 per unit. Direct material and direct labor costs are $8 and $12 per unit respectively. Variable manufacturing overhead is $3 per unit and fixed manufacturing overhead is 40,000. Variable period costs are $2 per unit and fixed period costs are 20,000 and we have to find the break even number of units. Now, if you remember in previous videos in this chapter, we showed how we can take direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, period costs, and sort of split them up into fixed costs and variable costs. So if you didn't watch that video, I highly recommend you do because a lot of the tools from that example we're going to be using here. So I'm going to show you how to do this in two different ways. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, write out that general formula profit equals revenue minus variable cost minus fixed costs. We're looking for the break even number of units. So I'm going to introduce a variable here. I'm going to let X equal the uh, break even number of units. So we're going to be solving for X. So when we're talking about break even, we're mentioned, uh, we're talking about the profit equaling zero. Now, what's the revenue going to be? If you remember revenue, it's going to be the selling price per unit times the number of units sold. And because the profit's going to be zero, the number of units sold is going to be the break even number of units. And the selling price per unit is $40. So we know the revenue is going to be 40 X. <clears throat> the variable costs, the total variable cost is going to be the variable cost per unit times the break even number of units. Problem is, in this question is that we're not given the variable cost per unit. We're going to have to figure that out. And so if you remember, variable costs, if uh, we're looking at uh, manufacturing costs and non-manufacturing costs, these period costs here, direct material, direct labor, both of those go under the variable cost per unit. And we're told that that's 8 and 12. So that's going to be 8 plus 12. Now there's also a variable portion for the manufacturing overhead, which is $3. So that's going to be added there as well. And there's also a variable portion for the period cost, which is $2 per unit. So that's going to be added there as well. And so if we add all of these up, we'll have 20, 25. $25 is the variable cost per unit in this example. And so the total variable cost is going to be the variable cost per unit times that break even number of units. And then what is the total fixed cost? Well, notice we're given the fixed portion of the manufacturing overhead, which is 40,000. And then we're given the fixed portion of the period cost, which is 20,000 right here. And so the total fixed cost is 60,000. So that here is going to be 60,000. And so from here, we can just simply give myself some more room here. We could just simply solve for X. So notice that 40 X minus 25 X, those are like terms. So that's going to be what 15 X. And then we have this minus 60,000 and that's going to be zero. And so what we could do, we could bring the negative 60,000 over we'll have 60,000 equals 15 X divide both sides by 15. And so X is going to be 4,000. And so that there represents our break even number of units. Right? So that was kind of a longer way to do it. Now, 
as I introduced before, there's a formula to get this x as well. It's basically the total fixed costs over the unit contribution margin. And so if we plug that in, the total fixed costs are going to be 60,000. What's the unit contribution margin going to be? Well, it's going to be the selling price per unit, which is 40, minus the variable cost per unit, which we calculated to be 25. And so this here is going to be 60,000 over 15, which is exactly where we were right here, right? So we get the exact same answer, right? So just want to show you both ways, just so you're not memorizing formulas too much or not knowing where these formulas are coming from. They're basically derived from this algebra over here. Now, before finishing off this video, I want to actually go over some concepts that you're going to see come up in your textbook. I want to relate them back to this example. And first thing I want to talk about is something called a margin of safety. Now, margin of safety can actually be expressed in different kind of terms. And I'm going to talk about it in terms of number of units in this video. And what margin of safety is, is basically the buffer you have until you reach that break even number of units. So it's basically the number of units that a, comp uh, that a company is currently selling minus the break even. number of units, right? So the break even number of units, we already know for this company here, it's 4,000. We just calculated that, but let's say that we know that. And then we're told that currently the company is selling 7,000 units. So their margin of safety would be 3,000, meaning that their sales or their number of units sold can drop by 3,000 until they hit that break even. And then after that, if it drops by more than 3,000, then the uh, profit is going to be negative, right? Because the break even uh, number of units is 4,000. If they drop by more than 3,000 from 7,000, it's going to go under that break even. So that would that's what the margin of safety is. And again, it could be expressed in different kind of terms. Number of units is what we're looking at. Now, another way to look at the margin of safety is through a percentage. And the way you do that is with this formula over here. So it's basically the actual units or the number of units currently sold minus the break even units, which is the margin of safety in terms of number of units. So that would be 3000. Right, so 7,000 minus 4,000, all over the actual units that you're currently selling, which is 7,000. And when you divide that, you would end up getting around 0.43 if we round it, and then multiply that by 100 to get a percentage, so 43%. Right, so what that means is that your number of units that you're selling can drop by 43% until you hit that break even point, right? So you have a buffer. You could either look at it from a number of units perspective of 3000, or you could look at it from a percentage perspective, which is 43%. And the last thing I want to mention in this example is something called break even sales. It's actually going to be a good segue to the next video because we're going to talk about this in more detail. But what break even sales is, is basically the break even number of units, 4,000, times the selling price per unit, which is 40 in this case. So 160,000. If you remember, I mentioned that we're going to look at break even from two perspectives, from the number of units, but also from the total sales perspective or the break even sales. And that's basically what it is. So what this means is that if this company makes $160,000 in sales, then it is going to break even, right? Because that is the break even number of units. So that revenue portion would be 160,000 to give you that profit of zero. And I'm going to show you in the next video how to get this number more directly.
right? So we're going to go through a whole formula like we did for the break-even number of units. So make sure you go ahead and watch that.